Well, Indonesians are definitely creative. Uh, as we can see, it's in our blood, it's in our DNA. Um, historically, it's proven through our heritage. As we can see, we have Borobudur, we have the shadow puppet, Wayang, the batik, and perhaps Gamelan. But it's definitely a rich culture, but what else are we known for? We are the fourth most populous country. Our most famous food is that, nasi goreng. And our most famous culture is probably uh, Bali. But what about Indonesian products? If I ask you about furniture brand, you probably say this one. Yeah? If I ask you about product design, you probably think of a country like uh, Italy or Germany. And in terms of architecture, it's probably a Swiss architect or a Dutch architect. But what about Indonesian design? In the context of design, has Indonesian name ever come up? I spent eight years in the US um, studying to be a product designer. I didn't exactly plan my return to Indonesia. It was my sister's wedding. I left with one suitcase, uh, left everything, you know, the house that I lived in, the car, tons of stuff. So no game plan. But I knew that it's good to be the bigger fish in a small pond. Well, what I mean by that is that not that I am a pessimist or I'm less driven, but I'm very pragmatic. So the first thing I did when I arrived in Jakarta is that I went to look other people who are just like me, other product designers. So yeah, I went to look for them in the product association. And to my surprise, there's only probably like less than 10 people in there and one guy running the show. I think he was the director and also probably the secretary. So uh, not a good start. Uh, so I thought, perhaps I do my own forum. You know, I gather my friends. And with Yori Anta at the time, we co-founded this thing called D-Form. The idea was to educate and bring some more design content to, into Indonesian products. This thing uh, has transformed into exhibitions. And we were doing, trying to create an industry that basically didn't ex uh, exist before. My dream has always been to be a designer and have a career in Europe. You know, but at a time, the, the world was not ready to embrace an Indonesian designer. I remember, I tell you a story, when I was in a furniture exhibition in Germany, uh, a visitor would come up to our booth and he would ask me, like, where's this made? And I would say, made in Indonesia. He's like, okay. That's nice, but why is it so expensive? So, okay. Uh, but at the same time, in Jakarta, if I do exhibition, people would ask me the same question, and uh, I would say, this is made in Indonesia. And they would say, like, no way. This must be imported. As if they're, like, in disbelief, you know, that Indonesian designer or Indonesian manufacturer can actually produce an international award-winning product. So that kind of... Yeah, I was kind of disappointed, you know, like abroad I was, uh, you know, looked down upon and then, and then back home as well, you know, like. So I thought, okay, why not design for bigger companies, you know, so I can get my name out there. So that's what I did. Uh, I started designing for other companies, for the likes of uh, Toto, for those who don't know, uh, they make toilets. <laughs> Uh, good ones, too. Um, <laughs> but I realized that in Indonesia, there's only a few companies that have that scale, that capacity, and most importantly, the understanding to support my growth or other people's, you know, as a product designer. So, again, I set aside my dream to be the product designer. Um, I went on to be a consultant. I was doing all kinds of stuff. I was doing interior projects. I was managing projects, uh, things like that. Again, I quickly soon find out is that in Indonesia, an emerging market, as a consultant, you really have to struggle to be appreciated. And what I mean by this is that we are not valued 
as our counterparts in abroad. You know, they, in, in Indonesia, most design services are not valued in ways that our counterparts abroad may enjoy. So then in one of those meetings, it hit me really hard. I was sitting in one of those meetings and I was like, okay, I want to be sitting at my client's chair. You know, like I want to be sitting where he sits and be at a principal level if I want to create change. So yet again, I put aside my dream as the design consultant and went on to focus on to grow my own business or businesses that I have a stake in. Europe has always been the epicenter of, of design. You know, uh, I go almost every year. Yeah, uh, we go to Paris, Milan, Cologne. But the business of design has shifted to Asia now because of the economic downturn in the Western Hemisphere. And what's happening, I'll give you one example. I just came back from Shanghai. One exhibition in Shanghai covers 750,000 meters square of space. Can you imagine that? It's so huge. So, but uh, what, what it means is that the Chinese government, it's really doing something to support the creative industry in China. And it's clearly paying off. So what about Indonesia? Well, we now have the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy uh, supporting the 14 subsectors. The thing is, we can't wait for the government. Um, you know, the conditions of the world have changed. And I tell you three points that I think um, contributed to these changes in a big way. Number one is that there's a true sense of globalization. I mean, if you go anywhere in the world now to big cities like yeah, Jakarta, Tokyo, Paris, New York, it all starts to feel the same. You know, you start, you know, start seeing the same brand, you know, like all across the world. At the same time, we're kind of losing our own identity as well in the process. Second is the rise of China and Asia in global commerce. This has brought along a very uh, influential cultural uh, influences including to Indonesia. So all those two points above actually created what I call the, the localization. And because of that, localization thrives because uh, entrepreneurs or business owners are now starting to see differently and conduct differently in the way they do businesses. And that means localization thrives. So I thought, you know, why don't I try to be an entrepreneur once again? I mean, I still have my furniture business, but I want to try other things. The beauty of being an entrepreneur in Indonesia is that you can start very, very small. This country is a haven for entrepreneur. I mean, literally, you can start with almost no money. And what we did is that we were presented with a challenge. And that challenge we answered with this concept named Bright Spot. At a time, if you ask a local person about Indonesian products, very rarely you would get a positive answer. So that challenge is that how do we change the young Indonesian consumers to consume more Indonesian products? So this concept, what we call the four-day creative market of all things cool, started, uh, the idea was you would take an existing scene of young, cool, independent designers. They're already out there. They're everywhere. But you would give them a platform and then you house them in an unused spaces in malls. So you give them a platform where they can conduct businesses and to sell to bigger audience. And in the process, maybe, you know, we have some little fun. Uh, so this little party of ours turned into uh, from having only 30 brands at our first event with 5,000 visitors. It's a four-day event. That turned into 150 brands and attracting over 60,000 visitors in the course of four days. Literally, it became a kind of a social phenomenon. And what's amazing is that we've done so with, with zero promotion budget. No money ever spent on marketing. And that's because Indonesia has the largest, well, some of the largest, not largest, but some of the largest Twitter and Facebook users in the world. So we just took that advantage and we kind of just rode the social, wave, uh, the social media wave. So very advantageous to be in Indonesia for that fact. So we thought, you know, what comes after that? You know, you got all these cool products, 
And, but the thing is, is like how many percent of those cool products are actually being consumed? We know that 65% of our GDP comes from consumption, but how many percent is that local product? And at the same time, you know, these kids, these people are producing these cool products, you know, products such as these. Very, very cool products. And they are international standards. I want to tell a bit story about, like, say, the shoes. You know, that kind of shoes can only be made handmade. And that technique can still exist in Indonesia right now. Whereas everywhere else in the world, let's say in Europe, it's starting to be, you know, uh, left behind. So you got all these cool products, fashion, women, men's, even kids. So we thought, why not create an independent Indonesian department store that will house all these cool products? When we first opened our first location in 2010, the goods department had only about 80 brands in our roster. We were occupying a space of a uh, thousand square meter. Today, we have about 250 brands. And 70% of that are local brands. So we we're very proud of that fact. But what are we most proud of is the fact that we now contribute to the changing the mindset of these young Indonesian consumers. They're now proud to wear Indonesian product. And there's even a term in local advertising agencies. They call them the bright spot generation. So I don't know why, but yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and they all kind of look like this. Uh, <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Internationally, our competitiveness also better. You know, we start hearing all this like, oh, it's cool now to be a designer for, from an emerging market, especially if you have a worldly view and with local sensibilities. So, you know, with magazines, international magazines such as these, uh, you know, covering remote places you've never been, countries that you never heard, and most important, small businesses that makes this world a better place. So I believe the new direction of Indonesia's creative culture is small and medium-sized creative businesses. And we need to support this because uh, they are going to create this change and this uncertainty uh, growth that we're having right now with, I think it was 6.5% growth of Indonesia. Uh, because Indonesia has the, the making of a great market. Again, 65% is from consumption, 50% of our 240 million people is actually under 30 years old. So it has the, the, the making of a great market. But how do, we, how do we nurture that? How do we actually take advantage of that? So I say what we should do is that we need to really harness this thing, harness this thing because the opportunity is there. And we need to embrace our own identity and innovation in the process. And that starts with taking pride and investing in our own capacity. So I'm going to end this talk by saying that the time is now to invest in Indonesia's creativity. Thank you.